and welcome to this edition of Trader Talk TV. Today we've got Alexis from Quantcast. Alexis, how are you doing? Good, thank you, Kira. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Today we're talking about how online data can enhance targeting and measurement in CTV uh, buying. So Alexis is coming to the office to talk about a little bit of that. Before we do that, Alexis, what do you do at Quantcast? Give us an intro to yourself. Sure, yeah, I'm a lead product specialist at Quantcast for the EMEA region. Um, and essentially, I act as a conduit really between our product teams, uh, our commercial team, but ultimately our clients and what they want from, from the platform and providing feedback back into our uh, product and engineering team. Excellent. So today we're talking about this bringing sort of online data into sort of CTV sphere. So, uh, you know, Quantcast has got a great reputation of sort of building sort of first party signals in the, in the open web. Uh, but now you're like looking to bring that together to kind of like target and measure in CTV. So can we start talking about the targeting thing first? Because I'm be interested and in, in the, in the, the viewers be interested in how you're actually bringing that open web data into a CTV environment. Like, so people say, well, aren't the signals already there in CTV? Why do you need to bring this open web data in? So talk a little bit about that and then explain to the viewers how Quantcast is actually able to do this. Sure, yeah. So. Um for those of you that don't know, Quantcast has now got a self-serve platform, has been in market for a number of years now, um, and that acts as kind of the foundational element in terms of how we bring our data into a technology piece um, and make some of those decisions more autonomous. So you talked about kind of how, how we do it. The foundational element has always been our uh, data and tech layer. So if I start by drawing out here data, tech, and autonomy from an uh, AI and machine learning perspective, that acts as our foundation for everything. Whenever we develop a new product and, and a new channel, we think about our measurement and how we can add kind of a bit more insight than the traditional media metrics that you get from, uh, from traditional platforms. Now, if we think about that and what we see from an open internet perspective, it's audiences. And since 2006, the kind of the CEO Conrad Feldman found a challenge that online publishers fail to understand who their audiences were. Mm. So if we start drawing out a number of different audiences here in terms of households, so we're obviously going to be focused on CTV today, and that's why I'm drawing houses, and we've got lots of different people here. Uh, from a, and, and we're wondering a little bit more about who they are. Okay, so if we think about that for a second. Those people have a number of different interests and exhibit those interests on a number of different devices. Okay, so if we start with number one over here, uh, it's our uh, audience behaviours. If we start to think about what signals we actually get from a CTV world, it's if you think about your own uh, CTV or your TV viewing behaviour, Kieran, mm -hmm. what are you most interested in watching at the moment and does that kind of change on a... A monthly or, or quarterly or even a yearly basis? Not really. I mean, what are you watching at Sci fi. I'm actually watching Full Swing on Netflix, the golf uh, yeah, yeah. documentary. It's actually quite good, actually. The so sporting documentaries, yeah. sci fi. Yeah. Yeah, great. So that, that's a typical example then. That probably doesn't change on a, on a regular basis, right? No. So if you think about this being time and this being your change in uh, consumption behavior, for a CTV device, that's not going to change too much in terms of, um, you know, over time, in terms of how you actually change your viewer behaviour. Yeah. So that actually stays fairly consistent. So what you're saying is TV viewing is not a barometer for, for behavioural activity in your life. I mean, Correct. most people are not going to say, well, I'm about to do something and I'll watch a documentary about it. Like, it's not, that's not necessarily how it works. People would tend to gravitate to online uh, or open web websites to find out more information. Correct, yeah, and I think what's, what's suitable to say here is, is not to discount from um, kind of the, the players in the market that do have very rich data sets in terms of things like ACR or, or context, content, yeah. um, content category, for example. So from a, from a CTV perspective, there's still a lot of data there that you can enrich your TV by or CTV yeah. by, um, but, but essentially you're probably looking for data sets outside of that um, to, to kind of en further enhance how you target and actually bring CTV closer to the rest of the digital buy. Yeah. So if you think about your uh, mobile device and laptop device, in terms of what you're looking at maybe in January, over the course of the year, towards the summer, 
and towards the winter, those consumption uh, and kind of content consumption behaviours actually change more drastically. So if I ask you actually in the last few months, have you looking at booking any holidays or are you looking at doing any renovation at home? Like what kind of things have you been interested in? What have you been researching lately? Yeah, but I wouldn't be researching on TV, that's for sure. Like. Yeah, so Whatever. On, your, on your mobile or laptop devices, what would you be kind of... Um, I'd be at? checking up about the Monaghan GA team, which is uh, doing very well at the minute, by the way. Um, <laughs> but there's no Netflix series in Monaghan, let's, let's put it that way. Yeah, <laughs> not yet. Um, maybe fairly soon. But you, you get the picture in terms of, like, if I think about my own content consumption at the moment, it's looking at things to buy uh, for my holiday that I'm going on at the end of May. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully uh, with my family in, in, in August. Yeah. It's things to do when I'm away. But also, you know, I'm always interested in what to add to my garden, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but to, to your point, I am also checking my sports team, which I'll remain nameless for, okay. for the purpose of oh. <laughs> So for, if we think about your, your mobile and, and, and desktop devices, the changes actually could be fairly drastic depending on your need state. Mm. And that gives us a much richer understanding of the, the online audience. And if I draw a mobile phone here very badly and a laptop here even worse you'll get to understand that the number of signals that we get from this uh, data set, and that data set being Quantcast Measure, it's an understanding of, well, all the kind of technical signals that you get from your CTV device. So across both of them, you're getting your IP address, you're getting time of day, you're getting geolocation, you're getting device information, you're getting browser information, so those technical signals pieced together with your CTV can start to enrich the, the other kind of signals that you're getting from online too. So the other signals that you are getting from your mobile and, and laptop behavior are things like context. And that context can come from uh, written word, images, and video. So that contextual signal is critical, really, in terms of how Quantcast can address and bring some of those online signals into the CTV world. The connective tissues being these kind of data points here that can be pieced together to understand groups of audiences and how we should be uh, targeting them across their relative uh, households. So you're overlapping then the behavioural activity from online uh, open web into CTV effectively because that's where sort of the extreme behavioural changes happen, whereas the CTV, it sort of remains sort of static in terms of like what you watch and when you watch it. Yep. Um, so how are you doing this then? Like obviously, can you talk about the footprint you guys have in the open web that makes this possible? Yeah. Because um, that's, that's a very interesting sort of thing, because that's kind of like very unique IP that you guys have that enables you to do this. Yeah, so we, we talked about the foundational element and one of those elements is data. So Quantcast Measure sits across over 100 million uh, publisher destinations uh, in the open web. What it enables us to do is have a JavaScript tag, a first party tag that sits on the page and fuels the tech with information. Mm -hmm. And that information being those signals that we talked about up here. So everything kind of is fueling this data layer, the tech layer, and then also the machine learning that goes into piecing together those uh, audiences and also the devices that we want to be able to address. Okay, we're moving away from the targeting then. Like obviously, you can target as many uh, ads as possible. What about the measurement piece? How do you actually show that this works for, for buyers? Cool, so this is where it gets interesting from an advertiser perspective because not just the data that we're collecting and the data points that are being exhibited from how we're buying, but from an advertiser perspective over here, if I, sorry. Sure. Advertisers, going back to my agency days, have always tried to plan and buy using their own first party data, their own audience data, mm -hmm. right? Now, it gets interesting because when you have that data and it's available online, you can start to understand who that audience is based on uh, the data signals that we're also seeing. You can match the two together and get a greater understanding as to who your audience is and what content they're actually reading and uh, the, the other kind of data signals that we talked about uh, married up with their, their own first party data. If we start to think about that, when people on, onboard their first party data set, this could be via a uh, CDP or a DMP, mm -hmm. 
or a CRM list mm -hmm. uh, via like a, a live ramp, for example. Yeah. This can all come straight into this uh, data layer, but with the kind of insightful uh, data points and, and information that can be surfaced within our, our planner instance. Yeah. Now, when this starts to get interesting is when you start to run some activity too. Okay. So you talked about the measurement piece, and this is where it kind of, from a, a connected consumer journey, it begins to make a lot more sense from a, a single data source, a singular uh, tech uh, player to understand uh, the full consumer journey and how that can start to inform uh, actionable insights and, and how you start to address your media more, yeah. more consistently. So our final point here is actually, when, when we think about the, the brand challenges, We start to think about the, the funnel, and I've been practicing my funnel drawing, but it's not going to be very good. Yeah. But up here, you've got your awareness yeah. tactics, which could include CTV, for example. Yeah. Here, you've got your consideration tactics. Yeah. And down here, you've probably got your conversion. Yeah. And maybe even post purchase, mm -hmm. but we'll talk about that another day. So as people work their way through, through that funnel, if you have a singular data source within a, a technology platform such as Quantcast, you can start to marry the pieces of uh, information across that funnel and get a greater and deeper and more meaningful connection to your consumer based on the activities that they're carrying out. So you could do funnel, funnel activity with a brand, for instance, because you're able to do exactly. the bottom of the funnel here quite, quite well, which Quantcast has been known for. Yeah. But you can also do the two two top pieces like awareness and consideration, which is where TV would automatically sit. Exactly. And I think the, the real value here is kind of, in traditional platforms, you would have to piece together uh, that fragmented marketplace a little bit more and start to make sense of metrics that you've got available. So mm -hmm. the traditional metrics for CTV at the moment are things like completion rate, uh, cost per completed view, reach, and frequency. Yeah. But what if you actually had insight in terms of your display activity or your maybe consideration activity from a pre-roll perspective that could inform what audiences you should be targeting at the top of the funnel? Yeah. What if you were able to bring your first party data set into the platform to help understand who your audience is and where they are in their consumer journey, mm -hmm. what they're researching right now, um, and actually then inform which audiences you should be targeting? How do you target lookalike uh, uh, models from a first party data set at the top of the funnel to get greater value from your investments. Mm -hmm. Those kinds of data points and pieces and the autonomy that the platform offers gives us that capability to connect through the funnel and give insights at each individual stage and snapshots really of, of what you should be doing. Is, that, is it better for you to work with everything in the funnel or can you work sort of like yeah. CTV only, you can work bottom of the funnel only, what, what's the sort of process? Yeah, I guess each in, uh, individual category kind of works in a different way. If we take mm. the retail space, for example, um, typically we see a lot more upper funnel activity. Um, we tend to see a lot more kind of CTV activity, but potentially with some offline measurement like a, a Sakana or an RRI, as yeah. they used to be known. So there'll be different types of categories and different types of uh, uh, advertiser behavior. If we take one of our um, advertisers, I think one of the most kind of interesting use cases that we came across was for, for a major telecoms company. Mm. Um, I think what they saw during the COVID times was a massive shift in this red line in terms of what people were consuming yeah. and how, how that informed their, their brand budgets yeah. and where they should shift their spend. If you remember rightly and you go back, you, you know, you've placed yourself back in those days of uh, getting an email and all staff saying, don't come to the office, please work from home for the foreseeable future the excitement that that brought because we weren't used to it, and then quickly within a week or two with the kids at home, you totally realise you didn't have the sufficient infrastructure at home to do you know, your day job as well as having kids on YouTube all day. Yeah. So all of a sudden we saw an uptick of people consuming content about the best broadband providers. So very, very quickly the advertiser was able to see in, in the planner instance why people were not engaging as much with their mobile and television packages, for example. It quickly became clear, based on their pixel data, their on-site data, that people were looking at their broadband deals and, and also 
based on our Comcast measure data set, it was quickly becoming apparent in the keyword cloud that they were consuming content about faster broadband. That informed moving away from kind of mobile and television packages into uh, a broadband world. Do you have to buy this through the Comcast platform then? Is that, is that the sort of uh, requisite for, for this to work? Yes. Right. Uh, the, and then you're connected up to most of the CTV sources then? Correct. Right. So we're currently going through an integration with Freewheel. Okay, um, amazing. So that will get us uh, access to a number of other kind of broadcast players. Okay. Um, but we are connected to the other major kind of uh, CTV, kind of fast stream, uh, fast uh, CTV providers like Samsung, LG Ads and so yeah. on. Yeah, okay. And you're directly integrated into those platforms and now you're looking to get integrated into Freewheel, which is Correct. interesting. Yeah. Where do you think this is sort of like, so, you, so you, you're looking at fast, but can this be work for broadcasters, AVOD, EVOD as well? I mean, that's where the, the real rubber hits the road when it comes to TV in the UK anyway, for instance. Yes. There's, with any new kind of emerging channel, they fast, uh, well, quickly becomes apparent that the challenges and that fragmentation piece. And that's still going to be one of the things that advertisers have to navigate. It's going to have to be kind of, what do you prefer to have? Is it fragmented buys, but you get your reach and your frequency across that? Mm -hmm. Or is it kind of a, a connected buy across your digital, online video, uh, mobile, and connected TV space yeah. with, a, with an underlying layer or our final layer, which is measurement? So from a fourth perspective, and it sits underneath, and it's quite unique So to the Quantcast platform, it's what... Um, snapshots, if you like, of reports that you can get that can start to piece together whether your campaign is actually successful or not. Mm. So the different types of reports that you've got are things like Brand Lift. And we call it Brand Lift Live, and I'll explain why in a second. So we, as I mentioned right at the beginning, whenever we develop a new channel or a new product, we think about the, the measurements or unique measurement that we can bring to that channel. So one of the unique reporting capabilities or, or kind of measurement capabilities is our Brand Lift Live product. This gives people an understanding um, around user sentiment based on the exposure that they've had from a CTV perspective. Mm -hmm. It works with a, in a traditional way that everybody knows and loves from a Brand Lift perspective, a control and exposed group. Um, and delivers against maybe six or seven different uh, templates around awareness, recall, favorability, intent, consideration, familiar familiarity, uh, and recommendation. So it gives people that understanding, not just at the end of a campaign, but from an insights perspective, you can see this live in the platform as the survey is being delivered, as control groups are being exposed, as uh, exposed groups are being exposed, and what that sentiment is towards the different types of questions that you can ask. What this gives us is an understanding in terms of what creative is driving the best lift, mm -hmm. what frequency is driving the best lift, what uh, kind of uh, audiences are driving the best lift, and so on. So it gives people that understanding of, hey, look, I've brought my audience into this platform. I've, I'm new to the platform. I need to understand who my audience is. I want to measure how effective my awareness spend is based on sentiment towards, towards my brand. That would be kind of the perfect solution for you. Okay. All right, so Alexis, that was great run through on, the, on this uh, platform. I, I love the fact that there is the ability to overlap that open web sort of signal into the CTV space. So you have the audience, the advertiser, the connected consumer and the measurement and, and the platform looks really interesting. I'm, 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 is the take up being quite good? Uh, how, how are the buyers it, looking at it? Yeah, that's, that's an interesting question because traditionally we've been seen as this kind of consideration and conversion platform. Yeah from our modeling and our ability to drive outcomes, what we're adding to that now is the awareness piece. How do you inform your awareness activity through your performance activity? And then also in reverse, how do you make your awareness activity or your CTV in this case, performance? How do you make drive a performance outcome uh, from, from your CTV activity? And ultimately another kind of report that is able to do that is things like site visit report yeah. and your funnel impact report. So that gives you an understanding in terms of how you can connect the different types of campaigns that yeah. you would run to understand a bit more about um, the kind of the outcomes that are being delivered. Yeah. And on that note, uh, you can talk to Alexis about 
the platform of Quancast and very, very interesting sort of overview, Alexis, and thanks for coming in to explain that to us. No, thank you for having me. Yeah. And that was Trader Talk TV, and we will see you next time. Thank you.